So the function f could be something like the temperature on the floor of the room. It would be a, a scalar function defined over a two-dimensional planar region. Um, I'm going to look at what the gradient of the function is in polar coordinates. So first, um, in polar coordinates, you've got a, a certain r and a theta. So theta is the, the angle of this line segment to the horizontal, and, and r is the length of this line segment, and that defines a certain point. Okay, so that's the point that defines w which, which uh, part of the f function that you're looking at. So it's going to be f at r theta. It'll be like the temperature at a certain point on the floor defined by the r coordinate and the theta coordinate. Now, when we take the gradient of this, what we're going to what we're go going to want to know is uh, as I move out in in this direction, how is the temperature changing? And also as I move in this direction like this, right? I'm moving like this, perpendicular to this red line segment that I drew. Uh, how is the temperature changing when I go that way also? Those are the two things that you want to know. So we draw two unit vectors. One's called E sub R, and that that E sub R is parallel to this line segment, and this E sub theta is perpendicular. And the length of E sub R is 1, and the length of E sub theta is 1. Okay. So when we write out the formula for the gradient, we can, we can use these unit vectors e sub r and e sub theta. And you can see from this drawing that if theta changes, then e sub r and e sub theta will also be different. So, for example, here's what would happen if theta was made bigger. And you, you can see that as you move, uh, as you change theta and your, your, your point's in a different place, and you can see that the basis vectors, this guy is ER, E sub r and this guy is E sub theta and you can see that the basis vectors sort of move with the angle theta. So I'm going to put this back how it was. Uh, approximately this angle. Okay. And this guy is E sub theta, and this guy is E sub r. Okay. So looking at this formula again, um, you could ask why is this uh, partial of f with respect to r in, in this E sub r direction? Well, you're looking at the function f, and you're, you're seeing how it changes as you go along r. So that makes sense, partial of f with respect to r, and, and that's going to give you your, your component of the derivative in this er direction. And then similarly you could say, well, how does f change as I, I'm keeping r constant and I'm changing theta? Well, that kind of goes like this, 
All right, over here we were keeping theta constant and changing r and looking at the effect. That was a partial of f with respect to r. Now we're saying partial of f uh, with respect to theta. So we're going to hold r constant and just change theta. And, it, and you can see that that almost gives you this term. Um, but there's also this 1 over r, so why is that there? Well, the idea is you're, you're looking at how the function changes with respect to theta. If you were very close to the origin here, as you change theta, you would, you would only move a little bit. And if you're very, if you're far from the origin, out here, as you change theta, you're going to move more. And this 1 over r is the factor that basically corrects for that. You know, the the farther out you are, the the more you're gonna be moving as you change theta. The farther you are from the origin, and the distance you are from the origin is r. So that's how that one over r comes into play.